Hello everyone. Our distant ancestors left behind creations that still amaze us today. If you're already subscribed, you've seen the evidence with your own eyes. If not, there's no better moment to hit that button and join the journey. Today, we're diving once more into the shadows of the past, unearthing stories and artifacts that defy belief. Some of them are truly extraordinary. Subscribe now. The past is calling, and the adventure begins here. The Tor's pony cap and Tor's horns are part of one object called the Tor's chamfrayan. But whether these Iron Age artifacts were ever supposed to be joined together is a matter of some debate among historians. The bronze objects are currently in the National Museum of Scotland and were discovered at the same time and in the same place. It's obvious that the horns were joined to the pony cap after the pony cap was made, but nobody's sure whether they were made specifically for this purpose. Some experts think that the horns are drinking horns and didn't originally have any connection to the cap whatsoever. The decorations on the artifacts are typical examples of the La Tene style, which is a form of Celtic art. That helps historians to date them to around 2,200 years ago, although it's possible that the horns are a century or two younger. The fine design and skillful construction of the artifacts is a testament to the skill of elite Iron Age British craftspeople and proves that the Romans were inaccurate when they later described the ancient occupants of Scotland as savages and barbarians. Sweden is always a good place to go looking for Viking artifacts, and that proved to be the case yet again when a gorgeous Viking brooch was discovered in May 2015. It was found during scheduled excavations in the port of Burka, the oldest town in the whole country. To be totally accurate, the artifact isn't an entire brooch, it's a tiny dragon head that was once part of a brooch, and it's made from bronze. Archaeologists were especially interested in the object because it perfectly matched the shape of a mold that was found in the same place in 1870, so it's reasonable to assume that we now have both the artifact and the mold it was made from. Burka was once a vital trading center, importing and exporting goods from Scandinavia to Central and Eastern Europe, and even as far away as the Orient. It was established during the 8th century and has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1993. Unusually for a representation of a dragon, the creature depicted on this brooch has curly hair and open jaws, making it unique. Nothing that looks like it has ever been found before or since, with the obvious exception of the mold. Shall we look at one more Scottish discovery before we move on? Well, why not? In the 9th and 10th centuries, the Vikings attacked, invaded, and pillaged their way across much of Europe. Local stories claim that the native Scots put up a good fight when they landed in Scotland, with a particularly massive and devastating battle fought in Galloway. There was no strong evidence on this conflict until 2014, when amateur archaeologist Derek McLennan uncovered the Galloway Horde, an extraordinary collection of Viking valuables. It has the biggest collection of Viking riches ever discovered in the British Isles, with slightly under a hundred relics dating back over a thousand years. It's difficult to say which individual piece in the trove is the most spectacular, although many people believe it's the exquisite Anglo-Saxon cross. Because of the ornate nature of this item, scholars believe it can only have belonged to a monarch or a powerful religious figure. The cross is composed of black and yellow, with gold leaf ornamentation and carved iconography referring to the gospel authors Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The cross alone is valued at over $2 million. The entire collection is significantly more valuable. Let's stay in Scotland a little longer and take a look at the Crammond Lioness. This Roman-era sculpture was found close to the mouth of Edinburgh's River Almond in 1997 by a passing ferryman. Archaeologists said at the time that it was the most important Roman-era discovery in Scotland for generations. It's an unusual sculpture that depicts a male prisoner, bound at the hands and feet, being mauled and eaten by a lioness. Her teeth are sunk deep into his skull. The entire sculpture is carved from a single block of stone measuring approximately one and a half meters long and a little over 60 centimeters tall. We'll never know precisely why it was created, but some historians believe it may have marked the entrance to the tomb of a Roman military commander who served at Crammond Roman Fort nearby. If that's the case, the tomb has never been found. Experts have no idea how or why the sculpture ended up in the river and arrived at the place where it was found. Like the tourist chamfering, the sculpture is currently on display inside the National Museum of Scotland. Our next discovery takes us further north and deeper into the past. In 1985, a farmer out for a walk on the beach in the Scottish island of Sanday stumbled upon a small pile of bones and an unusual-looking plaque. He had no idea what he was looking at, but he thought it looked ancient. He was right. 
this whalebone plaque marked the position of what is now known as the Scarboat Burial. Before being used as a grave marker, it was a lead bullion weight used to weigh gold and silver for trading purposes. Both the artifact and the burial it was left beside are 1,100 years old and Viking in origin. The Viking boat itself had long since rotted away by the time archaeologists found it, but the rusted iron rivets left behind clearly show its shape. The boat was set into a stone-lined pit and contained the remains of a man, a woman, their child, and an array of Viking grave goods, including swords, arrows, bone combs, game pieces, and spindle whirls. The fate that befell the family is unknown, but they must have been highly regarded by their peers to be afforded a burial like this. All archaeological discoveries are interesting in their own way, but a first is always special. It's rare for an expert to see something that nobody else has ever seen before, but it does happen. Here's an example of it happening in England in April 2017. A metal detectorist found this unusual gilded silver object in a field in Devon and took it to a local museum for help identifying it. The museum was stumped, so staff there consulted with experts from elsewhere. They're still not sure what it is now, but their best guess is that it's a tiny reliquary treasure box, and it's somewhere between 1,000 and 1,400 years old. If it's a reliquary, it ought to have a religious relic inside it, but if there ever was one, it was long gone by the time the metal detectorist found it. The gold and blue glass setting of the artifact suggests that it was of enormous value to whoever owned it, but without anything to compare it to, we can't say why. If it's not a reliquary, archaeologists have no idea what it might be. 2,500 years ago in China, there was only one man you wanted to see if you were seriously ill. His name was Bian Shu, and he was a legend in his own lifetime for his healing abilities. The doctor was also said to be clairvoyant, and is credited with numerous miracles in the ancient Chinese book Shi Ji, where he's literally referred to as the Doctor of Miracles. Legend has it that his skills were given to him by an elderly magician as thanks after Bian Shu was kind to him during his previous career as a hostel manager. Most historians and archaeologists thought him to be nothing more than a myth, until the 2013 discovery of almost a thousand bamboo tiles from Laoguan Mountain in Chengdu. After being collected and studied, the tiles were identified as medical books written by a school operated by Bian Shu. They list advice, illnesses and treatments in dermatology, ophthalmology, gynecology and traumatology. The texts even list the major points of acupuncture, which means acupuncture itself could have been a Bian Shu invention. He probably didn't perform miracles, but it's clear that he was exceptionally far ahead of his time as a physician. A few years ago, the world went crazy for fidget spinners. The fad was everywhere for a few years and then disappeared completely. During the peak of their popularity, someone tried to claim that the ancient Mesopotamians invented the fidget spinner thousands of years ago. Here's the artifact that they presented as evidence. It's definitely Mesopotamian in origin, but we're sorry to say that it isn't a fidget spinner. In fact, this is a very ancient weapon. When the 3,800-year-old artifact was first put on display in the Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago, USA, experts thought it was a spinning toy made of baked clay. Today, though, the museum's experts think it was probably the head of a mace. The artifact was first found in the vicinity of a temple which supports the idea of it being a mace because the ancient Mesopotamians thought maces were the weapons of the gods. The weathered remains of carved animal heads can be seen on the sides of the object, which is again consistent with the design of ancient maces. It's still a fascinating object, but it's not a fidget spinner. Shopping lists are going out of fashion. These days, people either order their groceries for delivery through the internet or write lists on their phones. The days of writing a list on paper and then taking it to the shop with you are almost over. To be honest, we don't know why our parents and grandparents still bothered with paper shopping lists when they could have had awesome mechanical lists like this one. It's thought to be a relic of the 1920s or 1930s and was found in England in April 2021. The system is simple. The names of common household goods are etched onto the brass block with movable markers next to each one. So long as a household remembered to update the markers whenever they ran out of a specific commodity, shopping was as easy as taking the block on your shopping trip and buying whatever the markers pointed to. This would have been a convenient gadget for the time, but also came with limitations. It's great for remembering things that you buy regularly, but doesn't include space for anything else you might need to purchase. Since we've dipped our toes into the realm of magic and miracles, let's go a little further. In 2015, archaeologists found these tiny ancient silver scrolls in Jordan. 
The silver foil they're written on is rolled so tightly that it's impossible to unwrap them, but it's possible to read what's written on them by using a CT scanner. Unfortunately, that didn't get us very far. The language written on the 1,300-year-old scrolls is unknown and can't be translated. It seems to be a combination of pseudo-Arabic and Greek symbols. Interestingly, some of the few Greek symbols that can be identified are associated with magic. As we already know that spells and incantations were often hammered out into gold or silver and then buried in the ancient world, it's highly likely that this is a magic scroll. It's unlikely that it was ever meant to be read again after being written. Instead, it would have been placed inside an amulet and then either worn on the body or placed in the home as a way of warding off evil spirits. Glastonbury in Somerset, England is a place famous for its enormous annual music festival, which is considered to be the world's best. It's also famous for its many ancient monuments and buildings, including its abbey. In 2011, the abbey welcomed the return of the Glastonbury Grace Cup after an absence of 125 years. The ornately carved drinking vessel, which is effectively a tankard made of oak, was made during the 16th century and is said to have once belonged to the many abbots of Glastonbury. The scenes depicted on its surface include the crucifixion as attended by all 12 apostles. The origins of the name Grace Cup are unclear, but it's thought to be connected to the artifact's religious nature. After being exhibited in Glastonbury in 1886 to mark the inauguration of the town's antiquarian society, it was sold to private owners and has remained with the same family ever since. Local legends say it was carved in defiance when the first Glastonbury Abbey was dissolved in 1539, but that can't be proven. Considering the fact it's made of wood, it's in astonishingly good condition for something that's approaching 500 years old. In 1872, this tiny gold plate was discovered next to the 1,800-year-old remains of a woman buried underneath York Station, England. It took almost 150 years to work out the purpose, but archaeologists and historians now believe that they've finally gotten to the bottom of it. They think it's a third-century mouth plaque and would literally have been placed inside the deceased woman's mouth at the time of her passing. According to the superstitions of the time, the presence of the golden plaque would have prevented evil spirits from entering her body and either taking possession of it or preventing her from reaching the afterlife. Only 23 such artifacts are known to exist in the world. This one is the only example ever found in the British Isles. The bodies of the poor wouldn't have been considered to be worth protecting all that time ago, so this woman would have enjoyed high social status. Unfortunately, she wasn't buried with anything that might identify her. The beliefs reflected by the mouthpiece are more commonly associated with Eastern mysticism than anything the Romans believed in, so it's odd to see such a thing so far west. Join our community by subscribing and turning on notifications, that way you'll always be the first to uncover our newest discoveries. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next adventure.